If you've bought a car from Carvana and you're having a problem or don't feel like you're getting a fair deal, our law firm may be able to help you. I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Newper & Covey, and we're a law firm that specializes in protecting consumers. That means that people who buy things, if you buy something from a company and you feel like you've gotten a bad deal, the company has either cheated you somehow or they just haven't given you what you were promised, or in the case of a car dealership, if they give you a car and it turns out to be junk or lemon or have some huge issue, and if they won't make things right with you, sometimes the only way that you can make things right is to hire a lawyer. So we are that backup where if calling them doesn't work, if they won't treat you fairly, we may be able to help. Now, Carvana is a company that we are specifically looking for clients on now if people have it, uh, if, you, if they're having issues with it. There are a lot of people online reporting issues. There are a lot of people calling us reporting issues. And I want to walk you through some of the things that who Carvana is. You probably already know if you've dealt with them, but a little background. Uh, what we do if people have issues with them and what our background is and what kind of things that we get calls from people on or see them complaining about online. First thing is who is Carvana? I'll just go through that quick because you probably know them, but they're they're the biggest online car dealer. So there's this, this whole trend and a bunch of companies were getting a lot of funding from uh, like these private equity firms or, or basically money was getting dumped at them to try to create the, the Amazon of car dealers that you would go online and you'd be able to buy a car just shopping online without actually going to a dealership to physically see it. The idea is that gets you if you're in California, you can buy a car in Delaware. They'll ship it across, uh, you know, down the country and get it to you. Um, that's the concept anyway. It's been a lot harder in reality to implement this than uh, than it looked like. And there's lots of different regulations in every state. Cars have title issues in different states. Transporting them can be a problem. We've seen a lot of issues, not just with Carvana, but with other companies that tried to be the online car dealer that were often leaving people high and dry or they would have some problem and the, the, the online car dealer is just like, whatever, I don't care, that's your issue. And so Carvana is the biggest one now. They're kind of the last uh, dealership standing. There were some other ones uh, that had, had even bigger problems than Carvana's had. And Carvana is still left and they are selling a lot of cars online, which even if they were the best dealer in the world, that would mean a lot of people are going to have problems and a lot of people are going to end up in a situation where they may need to hire a lawyer. Now, who is Nooper and Covey? <laughs> who, who are we? Um, so we're attorneys. We're, we're kind of an all remote firm. So we don't actually have physical offices where you'd go in and talk to us. We have attorneys in various different states around the country. I live in California. Um, I'm licensed in California and Texas only. Uh, my law partner is in Georgia. We have attorneys in Georgia. We have attorneys in, uh, or one attorney in Pennsylvania, one in uh, Washington now, I believe. And so we're kind of just hiring the best attorneys we can to try to help consumers and to try to get better attorneys um, with better resumes who normally would be working for these giant companies to come help people who are not getting the deal that they should from bigger companies. Um, we have a lot of experience with car uh, online car dealerships in particular and with car dealerships. We uh, just got done with what's called a mass arbitration, which is where a bunch of people who have claims against a particular company all file them with the same lawyers and um, they're, they're all individual cases still, but it, it saves a lot of the time on the lawyer's part. It lets us handle a lot more cases when we focus on one defendant where you're seeing the same issue come up over and over and over again. Well, then you've already done a lot of the work, and so it makes it easier to do these kind of cases. We take the cases on contingency, so this is not something where we're charging the clients up front. That means that there will be, this is all laid out in the agreement that we have with people, but where there's a percentage or a amount that would come out of whatever's recovered um, that would that the firm would take. Uh, sometimes in these kind of cases, it, it can get more complicated because there can be, if it actually goes to the end of the case, there may be an award by an arbitrator or if it goes to court uh, by the judge where they separately say the attorney's fees will be paid by Carvana, not, or in this case by Carvana, um, not by you. And then that, that fee award is whatever the judge awards to compensate for the attorney's fees. So it can get a little more complicated. That's something that we, we would have to talk to you about to make sure you understand it and, and walk you through the agreement. And we always do that with our clients, uh, make sure that they know kind of what's going on. Um, and there can be costs as well, which is something where um, if there, there's not as much if you're if you're going after someone like Carvana, but there may be someone inspecting the car. That's something that would come out of whatever the recovery is. Um, usually the, the only real cost is like a fee for filing the arbitration. Uh, that, that's again more complex stuff that we usually talk to people about once they've come on. But um, people want to know, hey, am I paying up front or is the attorney taking this on contingent? We think these cases are good cases and we've had a lot of very good experience with them, which is why we are happy to work without upfront payment and to take our, our payment out of whatever is recovered from the company. 
the, the one that we were doing this other mass arbitration on was a, a company called Vroom. They are now out of business. They were having huge issues trying to do this online car dealer model with people. And the big problem that they had was that they were not getting people the titles to the car, something you wouldn't even ever expect happening. But they were buying a car, and then they would get the car, and the car company would be like, okay, buy, <laughs> or, or like send them a temporary tag or whatever. And it, they could be, there are people who are not getting their title for two years who are never getting their title. A lot of this was happening just because of a me- the, the, the company's trying to go tr- grow too fast. So when you grow too fast, you don't have the systems in place. It's really hard to make sure these, these titles get transferred across states to make sure the person that they bought it from originally actually has the title. Sometimes they get them from car auctions where it would create these weird issues. But the end result is that we were seeing online dealers not giving people the title to the car. This happened with Carvana a lot as well. Um, they do seem to have fixed that. Like we're still seeing some people call about that, but not to the level that it was at a year or two, uh, two, or two ago, where there was actually a lot of state attorney generals going after Carvana uh, because of this. But we are still getting regularly calls every week from people uh, who have issues with Carvana. And we are interested now because we've finished up the Vroom cases. Vroom is now shut down. So our attorneys who were working, uh, trying to help people who had problems with Vroom, are now very interested in looking at anyone having uh, problems with Carvana because that's, you know, we've done a bunch of those cases against them as well. Not as many as with room we'd had around 300 people. And uh, because we've managed to mostly clear, clean those out, uh, we, we've got capacity and we're looking for additional cases specifically with Carvana. What kind of complaints do we get? Well, if you already know, like, hey, I just want to call an attorney, you can look at the phone number over there and call it and it should get you through to us. Um, usually what happens with our system is that we've got uh, there's there's like an intake form. It'll ask you, do you want to text f- to this form? The the form gets texted to you, and you kind of say, hey, here's my wh- who I'm interested in suing. Here's my situation. Here's what's going on. Um, and and we go gather information from you to let our attorneys evaluate it and decide if it's a good case or not. There's a lot of complaints that people um, make about Carvana that we've heard. You may be in one of these situations. You may be in something unique. Um, you, you know. We, we would er, always encourage people to try to work things out with companies first, like that we usually don't get calls from consumers unless they've tried and tried and tried and, and can't get the company to do something for them or they can't get the deal that they thought they were getting. They feel they've been treated unfairly. Um, that happens. I've had that happen in my personal you know, life with things, so I know it's happening to other people too, not with Carvana, but with other companies. Um, all our attorneys have, you know, unfortunately in our in this day and age, we, we all personally experience bad service too from various companies that... Um, will make a deal with you, sign a deal with you, and then they don't give you what you thought you would get. Um, And then (laughs) we've had this experience where, you know, we have stuff like uh, my partner had his computer light on fire from some part he bought, and then the company wouldn't even like, they were just like, whatever, that's your problem. And um, we we see stuff like that. (laughs) And so we've seen people saying that this happened to them with Carvana as well. Not everybody, um, I'm not saying you can't buy from them or shouldn't buy from them, but I am saying that if someone, if you make a deal with the company, you deserve the deal that you made. If you're buying a car, you think you're going to get a functioning car. You think you're going to get a, t- a car that has the title. And so what are s- the things that we've seen people say they have problems with and, and that our clients have come in having these problems? One at first is not getting the title. Um, if you're one of these people who had this happen, um, you know, if it was years back, it may depend on statute of limitations in your state. Uh, it, it could depend. The attorneys would look at it. Um, if you're having it happen now, you have a right to a title. Uh, most states have laws that specifically say you have a right to, t- to a title. They will let you sue under those laws sometimes. Um, Texas has, a, has very good law on this. California has very good law. Um, if you're in some different state, we may still be able to represent you. So it doesn't mean that we can't represent you if you're in a different one uh, than our attorneys are barred in. We have a lot of partnerships with attorneys in various states, including Arizona, where, Car- where Carvana is based out of. So we are able to, we'd have to verify, but um, it's it doesn't mean that that we can't you should call and check if you're in a different state um and, and if you're interested and so what are, we, we, another thing that people have happened not just the title thing we've have some people have issues where they get the car and then when the within the first few days or first week they discover that the car isn't actually working or some part of it isn't working or something's wrong that's not okay that's not something that a car dealer should be doing is selling you a car telling you hey this is a working car and then you get it and we have people saying like oh the engine doesn't work or oh the car just like blew up within not blew up but like stopped working completely within a week of getting it it's harder to hard for a dealer to say like hey that's your fault if it happens that quickly after um you get the car if it happens a year later you know six months nine months um then it really kind of depends but the cases that are really, really good just because they're slam dunks or like if you get it and the next day it's not working, Carvana or whoever sold it to you can't really say that it's your fault. 
uh, or they can, but it's 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 not as persuasive. And uh, whatever kind of damage that might be, like uh, some people have discovered, and another example would be like flood cars or cars that are being sold that um, they, Carvana can get them from all kinds of places. So they might get it from an auction. They may not have checked it out properly. They have a whole thing where they say, oh, we do these inspections. We've had people say they didn't really inspect it properly or um, and you know that's going to happen when you're selling a large volume of cars. You're going to have some inspectors, especially if you're trying to do it across all these states. You, you, they're not supervising all these people directly in the same way that a traditional dealership would do, where they've got their people who are in their place and they they watch them all the time. Um, it's not the same thing, and it can create a much higher percentage of problems than you would have at a traditional car dealership. Um, if some we've had people report that. Uh, they weren't getting the warranty. They weren't getting repairs under the warranty. Warranty law is very complex, and and what you may be told, or, or may uh, you, they may, if you anytime if you look in a contract, Carvana has had a bunch of different variants of their contract. But if you look in it, almost every company will say you have waived every warranty and you've waived all your rights, and you know you've bought it as is, and you don't get any rights at all. And sometimes companies will throw this in people's faces and say, well, you said in your contract you waived the warranty, and so what are you going to do? Um, the law is not so simple. And it depends on your state. Uh, it is often very complex. That's part of the reason why we like to repeat these cases against the same companies because we've already re researched all this issue. And when we do it for one state, then it's like, okay, now if you know, we we know the Texas law on this. Now we know this other state law. And because we've done so many of these online car dealer cases, we're very familiar with not every state, but with most states' laws. And they're all kind of the same, which is that you're not really as out of luck as you might think you are. A lot of states have rules that say you can't waive certain kind of warranties. The the title one is a good example. Uh, a lot of states will have laws that say um, that does not matter what it says in your contract, you cannot waive the right to have a good title to something that you're buying. So do, you could say up and down in your contract, it really doesn't matter. Some states will have laws saying that you can't waive the right to sue a company, no matter what it says, unless, you know, Texas is an example. They have this very strong consumer law. I use them just because I'm barred there and I know it. Um, their consumer law says doesn't matter what you say in your contract, if you didn't have a lawyer helping you with that contract when and that lawyer wasn't working with you to help draft it, if it's just a form, you can't waive it. Legally, you cannot waive your rights. So companies will think that, and, and all that times who you're talking to at a company is not a lawyer. There's some random person who, you know, will say, oh, I know the law, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean that they're right. And so you shouldn't ever assume just because you sign something that that is going to hold up in court or hold up in arbitration. There are other ones that we're seeing are uh, sometimes we'll see people say they didn't get accessories that they thought they were buying on the car. Um, floor mats is one that we see a lot where the car will be pictured with expensive floor mats and it doesn't have them. Uh, tires where the car, the person thought they were getting a certain type of much more expensive tire. It comes with junk ones. Um, if, you, if you're getting a deal for one thing, you should get the deal you thought you were buying. Um, and one, one thing that we see issues with sometimes is problems with delivery that could be damage that happens during delivery, scratches, um, the car, like some people say, oh, I got a completely different car from what I ordered. Like I bought this one and then this, it shows up and it's just not even the same car. It's like a lesser, less expensive, um, you know, like tier of, of whatever kind of car you bought, um, or it has the wrong, um, like packages with it that you thought you were going to get one that had this kind of package and it had a completely different kind. So that's kind of like a laundry list of things. It's not everything that you might run into. Every car is unique and every car sale is unique and you could have some problem that we've never seen before. Um, I don't know, but if you're not getting a fair deal, that's really kind of the core question. If you feel like it's unfair, uh, then it's something where other people may feel like it's unfair too. So a final kind of thing to think about is how does uh, suing Carvana actually work? Um, it, it is a little more complex than you might think and, and different from uh, what happens traditionally because it usually has to happen in arbitration. And you may not be familiar with arbitration, what it is, but it is something where when I say that a lot of times contracts aren't binding, uh, even though they say something, one of the things that is uh, it can be very hard to get out of is a contract that says that you have agreed to arbitrate. The U.S. Supreme Court has made a bunch of law on this. Um, it has made it um, not impossible, but um, in most cases, it is they tend to enforce those kind of clauses. That That's just ballpark. It can be very different. We, a lot of times we can get out into court. Uh, the plaintiff wants to be in court usually because you have more ability to like get information. You have more, it, it in general is just sort of a better venue. You get in front of a jury instead of just some random lawyer or some random judge. In arbitration, it is usually a former judge or just a lawyer. And that person acts as what's called the arbitrator. You do it over Zoom. That's one thing that's actually good about it is that the um, arbitrations are almost always remote now. 
Um, they can be in person, but it, for like a car, the in-person cost of having lawyers go go somewhere can make it um, like too huge to make sense for the, for even the defendant. Because what happens is the defendant, if they lose, has to pay the plaintiff's attorney's fees. So if I'm an attorney and I got to get on a plane from California to fly to like, let's say you're in, uh, I don't know, like Wisconsin or someplace, and I fly to Wisconsin, well, now they might have to pay a seven, you know, or four hour flight time and driving, and they, they might have to pay full freight for that. And so the defendants often want to do it on Zoom. It makes a lot more sense for everyone in terms of cutting costs, cutting time spent. Um, and so, and and everyone likes to just like sit at home and not have to, you know, go to court. It's a lot easier to do it uh, on Zoom. I think it's all, frankly how everyone should do it. Most courts are doing it that way actually too. Um, but so you end up with this hearing that is kind of like a court hearing that is done remotely. So what will happen is that you file the same type of things you'd file in court. The attorney collects a bunch of documents from you. They write out a thing that's, uh, first you usually send a letter that demands that the company um, like do a settlement with you. They usually just completely ignore those. Um, Carvana sometimes doesn't. We've, we've, we've had a lot of cases against Carvana as well, not as many as with Vroom, uh, but uh, we've had a decent number of them and Carvana will sometimes respond to your letter. And it, once the attorney's involved, the, the response starts getting escalated and gets a little bit uh, more reasonable. Um, sometimes they settle, sometimes they don't. Uh, that's just general for companies. If a company chooses not to settle, then it goes through a process where it's it's like a, a kind of a shrunk down version of what would happen in court. You do the same type of thing where you have an, this opening legal document. Uh, they call it a complaint in court in arbitration. It's just like this long thing that says, um, here's what uh, my demand, here's what you have uh, done wrong to me, here's the laws that show why I should win. Um, and it's the attorney does it, you kind of look it over, you make sure it's okay. You really focus on making sure that the facts are right, that what happened to you is right in any of the documents that we send you. Um, with an arbitration, it goes forward. The, the, there's like a call with the arbitrator. First, or actually, first the arbitrator has to get appointed. So that can take sometimes a few months. It, sometimes it can take longer. There's this, there will be a group uh, that, uh, like a, a nonprofit is the way to put it, but these, these groups that just kind of run the arbitration, they have a whole group of arbitrators that, that work for, don't work for them, but work, they get appointed. And so um, the, the, the arbitration group, that would be this, these companies called JAMS or AAA are usually the, the ones that are most common. And they say, this, guy, this person's the arbitrator. You go do a first call with the arbitrator. You're not on that call. The attorneys are. They set up the schedule. Uh, the, attor the attorneys would say, hey, look, here's when the arbitration date is planned for. Uh, make sure it works for everybody. And then they set a date that's sometime off. That could be six months off. I've seen them sometimes go more than a year. It really depends on the arbitrator. depends on just what's going on. Um, and then you, there's some document exchanges. There, there are Sometimes there could be a deposition, which is a recorded testimony. And at, you just kind of wait on the clock until that date happens. Uh, you, it, we cannot ever promise a settlement, whether someone wants to settle, whether they want to go to the end, whether the defendants want to do that. Varies. It just very much varies. Uh, I would say most cases do settle. Um, but if they don't, then you go to the end and you do just like a hearing on Zoom. It's just you on Zoom. Uh, they treat you like a witness. They swear you or swear you in like a witness. You testify. It's, it's much shorter than a trial. And it's only in front of this one lawyer or ex-judge. And then they make a decision. And so after maybe a month or so, they issue a written decision that says, did you win? Did you lose? Um, how much did you win? How much did you lose? If it goes to the end, then they will often assign attorney's fees. They don't have to. But uh, in a lot of states, uh, the laws that are designed to protect consumers will say, oh, if you cheated a consumer, or if you were unfair to the consumer, if they win, then because to to encourage the little uh, little guy or little uh, person or whatever um, to go for and and be able to fight these companies because you can't afford to just pay a lawyer right if the lawyer is uh, for one of these car cases if they fight to the end we've had cases that go up to you know twenty thousand dollars sometimes some people if they fight forever you can have cases that will be a hundred thousand dollars or so in attorney's fees on something that's in court usually on something that is much much smaller and the idea is to make the defendant pay for that so that they don't. There's an incentive to treat people better and to not leave it so that just anyone who doesn't have money can't hire an attorney, even if it's a fifty thousand dollar car getting destroyed or, or, or that's sold to you. That's a, it's it's a lemon or it's junk. Um, so that's kind of the concept behind that. That's how all of it works. Um, you end up in this process and you win or you lose. And um, it, it, a lot of it is kind of up to you, like what you think, what you're willing to settle for, what you're not willing to settle for. We, we are always willing to fight cases if we think the cases are good. If we take on your case, it's because we thought that you have a good chance at winning it because, you know, we, we only make money if we're getting results for you. So that's the whole general process. If you have an issue with Carvana, 
give a call to the number over there and uh, we'll, our intake team will talk to you and they'll have one of the attorneys look at the documents and see if it's a case that, uh, that we think would be a good case. And it just goes from there into the arbitration and uh, the process is just working with the attorneys.